Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. Okay, and welcome back to the Sword and Sorcery Saga, our continuing deep dive and review series all about sword and sorcery, sword and planet, and appendix and fiction. And in uh, this episode, we're going to do a quick review of Dilvish the Damned by Roger Zelazny. So if you guys remember all the way back in March of this year, March of 2021, when we officially kicked off the Sword and Sorcery Saga series, we did a review of three anthologies. And one of those anthologies we looked at was the absolutely incredible Warlocks and Warriors edited by El Sprague de Camp. And in this story, or in this um, collection, I was introduced to Dilvish the Damned, Zelazny's character, with the Bells of Shordan. And that was the very first time I had ever read a Dilvish the Damned story, and I absolutely fell in love. And so I wanted to end this year's uh, sword and sorcery coverage with the last video for the year in this series with actually looking at the first book of Dilvish the Damned. So there are two books. Uh, Dilvish the Damned is the first and this is a collection of the original short stories. And then we have here The Changing Land, which is a novel which, which, which concludes the main quest from this book. At least I think it does. I have not read The Changing Land yet, but I'm going to early in 2022. So uh, I can say right off the bat that both of these books, well, let's just say for sure, this book, Dilvish the Damned, it deserves a better cover. Uh, this book is incredible. I absolutely love it. I think it is up there for me with the Elric Saga, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is. Uh, the Elric Saga is so far personally my favorite work of sword and sorcery fiction. Uh, and then The Changing Land, I don't know if the book deserves this kind of not so great cover, or uh, maybe, maybe it does, but uh, we will return to this book in the beginning parts of 2022 to finish Dilvish's quest. But Dilvish the Damned, this original book, uh, let's read what it says here on the back. The Road from Hell. Escaping from Hell was only the beginning for Dilvish, and Black, his demonic metal horse, finding Jellarak, the evil sorcerer who sent him to 200 years of torture was the only thing that interested him, but fate had other plans. The armies of Colonel Lilish attacked his homeland, and only Black could carry Dilvish through the enemy lines to warn the king. The city of Dilfar was under siege, and only Dilvish, descendant of Selar, could raise the ghostly legions of Shordan and bring them to its aid. Then a damsel in distress cried out for help, but really wanted his blood. Twin sorcerers needed him as a pawn in a deadly game of power. An ancient forgotten goddess tried and failed to stop his quest for vengeance, while a werewolf almost succeeded. Then, when Dilvish finally climbed to Jellerick's uh, stronghold in the Tower of Ice, he found nothing but greater perils separating him from his ancient enemy. Really kind of an awkward uh, back of the book, I think, an awkward synopsis. And I think it does the book quite a bit of disservice to try to sell it as a novel with one cohesive narrative, because it is definitely not. And if you go into this book thinking that it is a novel with a cohesive through line of narration, I think you're going to be disappointed. Uh, this is most definitely a collection of scattered short stories, somewhat in a chronological order. I'm sure the chronological order was established later by Zelazny, not at the time of writing the stories, but at the time of putting together this collection. And there are actually a lot of loose ends. Uh, the main quest to get revenge on Jellerek is completely forgotten for most of the book. It is mentioned a couple times. You think maybe the once it appears in one of the stories right kind of the middle of the collection, you might think that the remaining stories are going to be about that, but they're not. That's not to say that they're not good because they really are. but. If you decide to pick up this book, just know that you're just going to be reading a collection of short stories. Now, 
that was also similar with Elric. Uh, Elric was originally published like in serialized short story fiction and later Moorcock would go in and he would kind of write little um, connecting shorter bits and pieces, reworking his stories into chronological novels and those work more as novels where this most definitely does not. So this was originally published in 1982 and the different stories range from 1964, which is the passage to Dilfar. And then the last one was written in 1981. Now what's interesting is that the Changing Land, the sequel, which concludes Dilfar's quest was actually published in 1981. So the sequel actually came out before the original. So like Elric II, it also has kind of a weird publishing history. But the stories that are included here, we have Passage to Dilfar, uh, Thalindi's Song, The Bells of Shordan, A Night for Mer Maritha, The Places of Ache, A City Divided, The White Beast, Tower of Ice, Devil in the Dancer, Garden of Blood, and finally Dilvish the Damned. And the first grouping of those were all written in the 60s and published in the 60s, I should say. And then there was quite of a long break. And then he picked up the uh, character again in 1971 and finished up this in 1981. So one of my biggest fears when I picked up this book and just because I liked the Bells of Shorting so much was I was afraid that maybe that was like the ultimate, like that was the best Dilvish would ever be and everything else would be maybe diminishing returns or just not quite um, stack up to the, just how incredible that story was. Well, I'm happy to say that not only is that not true, but it's not even my favorite story in this collection. That's how good the rest of these stories are, or I should say the uh, many of these stories are. Some of them are quite short. There's a few longer ones. As the ages, as the years progress, uh, the stories do get a little bit longer. One of my favorite, my two favorite things about these stories. The first is Dilvish's relationship with his uh, metallic demon horse black. It is super cool. Um, a lot of times these sword and sorcery novels, they are very much about a lone hero or a hero and a companion up against the world. And that is uh, true about the stories here. But um, because his companion is this demonic horse, it can take the shape or the uh, yeah, I guess the shape of a statue at any time to trick people into thinking it's just a statue, but it is a demonic entity that has possessed this black metal horse. And it's just, it, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. I'm sure it's somewhat similar if like uh, the witcher's horse Roach or horses Roach <laughs> could, uh, could speak. You might have a similar kind of, uh, conversations between uh, between Dilvish and Black. So Dilvish is a half elf, half human warrior kind of rogue or, you know, like a lot of these sword and sorcery characters, heroes, he multi-classes if you want to use in gaming terms. He's a rogue ranger fighter type guy. Um, he was imprisoned in hell by this sorcerer. We don't know that by this wizard and we don't really know why. The book begins with him already having escaped from hell. I don't know if you will ever get a flashback of him being in hell, but he has escaped like 200 years of torment. He comes back in this first story, um, riding towards his old city and um, trying to kind of reestablish his life, forget his pain and torment of hell. And as we've learned in the Bells of Shordan, he needs to go and resurrect this army of the dead to bring them back to his city in order to help defend against the, um, what was that, the, the, the forces of um, one of these counts here. And um, so yeah, that is kind of like the background. And what we really have here though are a series of disconnected short stories of little adventures that he goes on while he is riding around the land. And it's kind of like that old saying, no good deed goes unpunished. And every time he kind of stops to help, usually against Black's best, um, best suggestion. <laughs> Black doesn't like how much help Dilvish always wants to give to people. 
But Dilvish is actually a pretty good guy. We learn he treats people well when they deserve to be treated well. Um, and he's also a very good fighter. And because he's a half elf, he does maybe have an understanding, let's say, of magic. But um, one of my favorite stories in the book is the places of ache. And uh, the other thing, so uh, the other thing that I really liked about these stories is they almost never take the path that I think they're going to take once I start reading them. They are consistently and constantly surprising. They're always offering up very inventive plot twists and the characters, they don't act in the way that I think they're going to act. They act in a natural way that feels like they would act, but they almost never do what I think they're going to do. And that was something that I really appreciated about these stories because so often in these stories, we are so used to the tropes and just the common way that these types of sword and sorcerer heroes and characters act. So to see people acting differently is really cool. So I did want to read uh, the, the Places of Ache is my favorite story. And I just absolutely love the beginning. The humor in this is really, is really quite well done. There were quite a few moments throughout these 200 and so pages that I did laugh out loud. And so I do want to read a little bit about uh, from this story. And this says, as Dilvish the Damned traveled through the north countries, he passed one day along a twisting road through a low pine filled valley. His great black mount seemed tireless, but there came a time when Dilvish halted to unpack rations and make a meal. His green boots soundless upon the needles. He spread his cloak and placed his fare upon it. There is someone coming. That was uh, Black saying that. Uh, thanks, says Dilvish. He loosened his blade and began to eat standing. Shortly, a large bearded man on a roan stallion rounded a bend and slowed. Ho, oh, traveler, the man hailed. May I join you? You may. The man halted and dismounted. As he approached, he smiled. Rogers is the name, he stated, and yours, Dilvish. You've traveled far? Yes, from the southeast. Do you also make a pilgrimage to the shrine? What shrine? That of the goddess Ake, up yonder hill. He gestured up the hill. No, I was not even aware of its existence. What is its virtue? The goddess may absolve a man of murder. Oh, and are you making a pilgrimage for this a pilgrimage for this reason? Yes, I have done it often. <laughs> Do you come from afar? No, I live just up the road. It makes life a lot easier. I think I begin to get the picture. Good. If you will be so kind as to pass me your purse, you will save the goddess the work involved in an extra absolution. Come and take it, Dilvish said, and he smiled. Rogers' eyes narrowed. Not many men have said that to me, and I may well be the last. Hmm. I'm bigger than you are. I've noticed. You are making things difficult. Would you be willing to show me whether you're carrying enough coin to make it worth either of our efforts? I think not. How about this then? We split the money and neither of us takes a bloody chance. No. Roger sighed. Now the situation has grown awkward. Let me see. Are you an archer? No. No bow. Throwing spear? No throwing spears either. It would seem that I could ride away without being shot down. To ambush me later, I'm afraid I can't permit it. It has become a matter of future self-defense. Pity, Roger said, but I'll chance it anyway. Uh, just great banter between the characters. Uh, Dilvish does end up uh, killing that, that would-be uh, bandit, that robber, and he rides to the shrine himself for absolution. And then things take a very bizarre turn and one that I would have never seen coming but the turn that it takes was so much better than anything that I could have imagined so uh that is Dilvish the Damned I really re I highly recommend this just know going into it that you are not going to get a conclusion to any of the major story arcs you're not going to get a conclusion about his bringing the army of the damned of, of the dead back to his city to defend it. You're not going to get a conclusion to his tale of revenge. But what you are going to get are a series of stories that focus on some fantastic adventures that Dilvish goes on and meeting with uh, all kinds of very cool and interesting characters and a lot of bizarre things. If you've read Elric, 
I know that Elric can get very weird. Dilvish the Damned gets almost as weird and bizarre as Elric. And that is one of the reasons why I like it so much. I am really hoping that the major plot threads, the major arc is concluded and it concluded satisfactory in The Changing Land. I am going to leave it, of course, up to Zelazny to continue to surprise me. I'm going to go into this book with absolutely um, no preconceived notions about what to expect because this book here is most definitely a single novel. So it'll be interesting to see if Zelazny can carry that momentum through from the short stories into a single longer work. So alright guys, well I hope you liked my review and this video on Dilvish the Damned. I hope you are looking forward to 2022 and discovering and discussing all kinds of interesting sword and sorcery and appendix in fiction with me on the Dungeon Dive here. We have so many books to go over, just hundreds. I can't wait to get to my shelf to shelf video series uh, back to that when I finally get to my sword and sorcery and appendix in shelf so I can share all of my books with you guys. So, all right, well, I hope you enjoyed this and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.